Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Mr. Hyatt's book, chapter number 15, Circuit Analysis in the S Domain. And here we'll be discussing example 15.4 and we'll be solving practice problem 15.4. So example 15.4, calculate the voltage Vx. This point is the voltage Vx using the nodal analysis technique. Now if you note, we have a capacitor in the circuit and an inductor and two voltage sources. So we need to convert the circuit into Laplace domain or S domain or frequency domain, same thing. And since the circuit employs both inductor and capacitor, we have to select one of the S domain circuit from the figures below. So we have learned that uh, for capacitor we have two circuits. One is called series circuit, other is parallel, and similarly for, uh, sorry, for the inductor, and similarly for the capacitor also, we have two circuits. So we have to select any one of these. We'll see how to select that. Now, no matter which option we select, we have to know the value of I0 and V0, because the inductor uses I0, and the capacitor uses V0. So we have to find these two values, I0 minus and V0 minus actually. Now for that, we have to look at the circuit and this voltage UT is after T is equal to zero. That means before T is equal to zero, this is zero. And similarly, before t is equal to zero, this is zero. So let's draw the equivalent circuit. So the voltage source is only two volts left. This is before t is equal to zero. This one will become zero. The capacitor will become open circuit because it is steady state before t is equal to zero. And the inductor will become short circuit or behave like a short circuit. Uh, in the steady state condition. So from here we can see that the voltage across the capacitor, this voltage will be 2 volt. This 2 volt from here and 0 volt from here. So the net voltage will be 2 volt. And the current through the inductor will be 0 because there is no source. So I0 is 0. And now we need to select one of these since I0 is 0, so it is better that we select this series circuit for the inductor. And uh, since we are, will be using the nodal analysis, so for capacitor it is better to use this parallel circuit. Okay, but the question is, inductor we have selected uh, as L, uh, but what about the capacitor? What will be the direction of this current? Will it be from right to left or from left to right? Now for that you have to keep in mind the current flowing through the capacitor. Let's draw it here. The current is flowing from here. So if you look at this circuit, the, the current source is opposite of the circuit current. So our circuit current is flowing from left to right. So this is opposite of that. So we'll use this circuit and not the other one. So we discard this. Okay, so this is the circuit now we'll be using. And now we'll plug in the values. Uh, but before that, we can calculate the uh, all the values. As I mentioned, the UT is 0 before 0 and it is 1 after 0. So in our case now we are after T is equal to 0. So 2 will become 2 UT because anything multiplied by 1 is the same. So 2 is 2 UT for T greater than 0 and then we have 5 UT. So 2 plus 5 UT will be 2 UT plus 5 UT is equal to 7 UT for T greater than 0. 
and we know that ut in s domain will be 1 over s therefore the source will be 7 ut will be 7 over s similarly the other source 4 ut will be 4 over s 1 over sc for the capacitor plugging in the values it will be 2 over s and c v0 c v0 will be c times v0 which is 2 is 1 ampere so now our s domain circuit with all the values will look like this and now we are ready to solve it by nodal method okay we have marked the current direction so node equation at this point all currents are leaving 1 ampere plus vx minus 7x this one divided by 2s then this one vx over 1 and the right one is vx minus 4 over s divided by 4s solving simplifying multiplying by the lcm 4s square further simplifying from here we get this equation for vx now we have to uh, take help of partial fraction to break it down for that we need to have a square term at the bottom so let's take 2s common this term is left this can further be written in this form s square plus 2s plus 1 minus half to make it equal to half now this is whole square So s, s plus 1 whole square minus half will be minus half under root 2 whole square. Remember this 2 and 10 we have cancelled to make it 5 and 2. Okay, so we were here. Further breaking it down. Now we have 3 uh, portions in the denominator, 3 fractions. And now we can use the uh, uh, we can use calculator to find this value 1.707 and 0 0.2929 that will make it simpler and now we use partial fraction I hope you remember how to use partial fraction so a divided by one of the uh, denominator terms b divided by the second denominator term and c divided by the third denominator term and now we'll take help of the residue method. I hope you remember residue method. In the residue method, what we do is to find A, for example, we multiply Vx by the denominator of A, so Svx, and we put S or whatever is in the bracket equal to zero. So here's simply S, so S is equal to zero. Now for Vx, we put in Vx, x s s cancel so we are left with this plugging in the value of s is equal to 0 we get the final value of a as 4 similarly for b we'll multiply with the denominator of b so b multiply with the denominator of b v x and putting this equal to 0 we get the condition s is equal to minus 1.707 vx here these two will cancel this is what is left plugging in the value we get b 6.864 and similarly c negative 5.864 okay so our now vx will be as shown here by putting in the values of a b and c and now we are ready to take inverse laplace transform i hope you remember the formula we are in this form now we will go back into the time domain so 
4 1 over s will be 4 ut this one will be 6.84 e raised to the power minus 80 and similarly the other one so this is the final answer okay now the uh, practice problem similar but tricky slightly you see the difference the only difference here is the source this is 2 plus 5 ut and this was 4 ut here both source have same values so we'll follow exactly same technique for t less than 0 this will be 0 this will be 0 so 1 volt here 1 volt here now 1 volt at this point and 1 volt at this point will make the capacitor voltage 0, V0 will be 0 and the current through the inductor will be 1 divided by 1, so 1 ampere. So I0 is 1 ampere but V0 negative is 0 volt. So now our selection will change. Since V0 is 0, so we will we'll select this, this one 0, so only 1 over SC will be used for the capacitor. And since I has a value, therefore we will select the parallel one for the inductor. And same technique, what will be the direction, will direction of the capacitor, you can see. Uh, the direction of the source is the, the same direction of the capacitor current. So the capacitor current, uh, sorry, inductor current. Inductor current is flowing from right to left. So this arrow will also be from right to left. So this is the circuit now. And plugging in the values. After T greater than zero, it will be uh, like 5 here, so it will be 5 over S. This will also be 5. So 5 over S, 1 over SC, and SL. Okay, then I0 will find this one. I0 is 1 over S. 1 over SC. Plugging in the value will be 2 over S. SL will be 4 S. And source we had already calculated, so plugging in the values now all. We're ready to solve for the nodal equation. Mark the current direction as you wish, but follow the same direction while writing the equation. So from here, current entering, current entering, current entering, and current leaving. So we have the nodal equation. Solving. Multiply by the LCM. Solving further. So from here we get Vx in this terms. For the simplifying. Okay. And now we need to break it down into two fractions. We take common 2 from here and cancel with 10 and 5. Then we have to take the whole square. Whole square here, uh, adding 1 and subtracting half. Same technique that we followed. Whole square under root half square. Okay, so this is the complete fraction. Now we'll use uh, the calculator to find these two values. This is more simpler now. And now use partial fraction as we did earlier. And here also by residue method, following the same technique, you find the value of A b and c so our vx will be as shown here ready to take the inverse laplace transform now so taking inverse laplace transform this will be our answer
So I hope you have been able to follow this. If you have difficulty, let me know. Thank you.